Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at Active Storage once again because I think I have a pretty good solution for getting your image previews to work. You can see here if I upload an image, the image appears right here in the new form before it actually goes up. Of course, it's doing this with some JavaScript, which you can see right here using a stimulus controller. So we're just going to go ahead and set this up real quick to get this working. Uh, and this will also work if you like edit an image. I've already stopped the server, but you get the idea. Uh, so to get started, we're just going to do a Rails new video, and then we'll just CD into that and open it up in VS Code with the code dot command. Uh, and yeah, pretty much all we have to do is set up active storage on a scaffold. We'll do that first, and then we'll use a stimulus controller to hook this logic up. Uh, there's really no back and forth needed with the server, thankfully, so it's pretty easy to get up and running. So to get started, let's go ahead and let's generate the scaffold. So we're gonna do a Rails G scaffold for a post with a title and a body of type text. Go ahead and run that. We can then do a Rails uh, act active underscore storage colon install command. There we go. I always get that in the uh, action text commands of confused. Uh, and now we can do a Rails DB colon migrate command to migrate our database. Now that that's done, we can pretty much go ahead and start our server. And then we can come over to our VS code. And I'll zoom this in a bit so you can actually read it. So if we come over to slash posts, you'll see we have this, but we don't have a field for the uh, the file yet. So we're gonna add the attachment first. So let's come into our app, our models, and our post.rb. I have tutorials on setting up active storage if you haven't done it before. So I'm gonna be moving a little bit fast here just to set this up. We're gonna give it a has one attached of image in our post model. We can then come into our app, our controllers, and our post controller, and scroll down to the bottom. We just need to add the image into our post params. We can then save this. We can then come into our app views, posts, and our post form. Now in our post form, what we're gonna start off with is just the uh, the file field. So we'll say, all right, we want a field for the image. This means that the text area needs to be an image down here as well. And then we'll change this text area to a file field. We can then come into our post partial. And in our post partial, I'm just gonna copy this and paste it in. We can put the image wherever we would like. I'm just gonna put it right here. It's just gonna be an image tag for the post.image and then we'll give it a style uh, of uh, width of 300 pixels and a height of auto. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna refactor this on the spot. Uh, we're gonna change this to a class and we'll change this to the, I don't know, image uh, class. We'll then come into our assets and our style sheets, our application.css. We'll do a dot image. And then for this, we'll give it a width of 300 and a height of auto, just so that I don't have to do this. Uh, later, we're going to do that, and then we're going to do the same thing down here for a image dash container, and we're going to set the height to be a 300 pixels as well. And you'll see why we're doing that in a second. So we'll come down here. Uh, you could also set like a minimum width, but whatever. Uh, you can come down here into your post partial. It has this class. That's good. We're going to go ahead and refresh. You'll see the uh, the file field appear here. So I'm going to do a test and a case in the body. And I'll go ahead and choose a file. I'll choose the first one in my downloads and click create post. You can see that gets attached just like you would expect it to. Okay, so now let's add the image preview functionality. To do the image preview functionality, the first thing we have to do is stop our server. We're gonna do a Rails G stimulus for a previews controller. You can name this whatever you would like. I just went with the word previews. That'll generate our app JavaScript controllers previews controller stimulus file. Now to make sure that we're actually connecting to that, what we can do is uh, we can grab this, uh, oops, the file field right here in our uh, form. We're gonna extract this out and we're gonna say this needs to render a partial. Uh, and what we can do, let me just make sure I grab the right thing here. Uh, we're actually going to not render a partial, we're just gonna say render the image preview. Then we're gonna do a form, which will be our form. So we're gonna pass in the form and then we'll also pass in the post model right here. So both of these are gonna go into the partial. Now we can go into our posts, right click, new file, uh, underscore image, underscore preview, dot html, dot erb. And then in here we can paste what we had. Now in our div right here, we can do a data dash controller equals previews because we named it the previews controller. I need to go over here and save our form as well. Now let's come into our app, our JavaScript, our controllers, and our previews controller. In our previews controller, we're just going to console log something real quick which is going to be a check to make sure that we're actually set up with our stimulus controller. We can now do a Rails S to start our server. We can refresh the page and then hit Control Shift I, Oops, Control Shift I, 
Uh, now if we go back to posts and click on new post, we should see hello stimulus appear right here, which is our console log and our connect method. So that shows us when the page loads, the stimulus controller is actually firing. Now to actually get the previewing working, what we're gonna need is two targets. So we're gonna define these real quick. We'll say static targets equals an input target and a preview target. We're then going to come down here and for now, we're just gonna do a preview action, but we're gonna leave this stubbed out. Uh, so we'll just, you know, to do this, right? We'll just say do this later. We can then come into our image preview and we can refactor this a little bit. Now, one thing to note, if you wanted to use a, uh, like a Ruby content tag instead of a, uh, you know, div right here for the data controller, you can do that. You just need to uh, instead do something like this. Uh, oops, and then we'll come up here and we'll uncomment this. So now you don't need this outer div. You can instead use this uh, Ruby tag to wrap around your data. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just a div with nothing inside of it with some data that says controller previews. I'm going to go back to the actual div itself though, because I prefer that approach. I just wanted to point that out in case it's something you're interested in. Now for the actual div, uh, this is going to wrap around everything. Our label is actually going to stay the same. A lot of the magic is going to happen with our file field. So for our file field, the first thing we have to do is we have to grab a comma after the image. We're going to come down here, tab over and do a direct upload and set it to true. After the direct upload, we need to do some more data. This is going to be for our uh, for our controller. So we're going to have the previews underscore target, which is going to correlate to this preview target right here, or this preview target, the input target. So we're going to set the previews, which is the name of our controller underscore target to be the input. And then the action is going to be the change uh, action. So when this changes, we want to call the previews action in the, or sorry, we want to call the previews controller preview action. So in our previews controller, we have a preview action. So this will get called when the uh, input here changes, which is our file field. So whenever we upload a new image or we click choose file, that's this changing and then it will fire whatever's in here. So in here, we just have to update our uh, image container. And we don't have an image container right here. So what we can do is we can do a quick little check where we say is the uh, is the image already attached to the post, in which case we're editing. We're not creating a new post because uh, if an image is attached, it means we've done it previously which means we should just show what the old image looks like here. And in this case, um, again, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of refactoring, but what we're gonna have is a image tag for the post.image with some data. The data will be our previews uh, underscore target, which is gonna be our preview target. So in here we have an input target, which is our on change. We need to get the stuff from our input target and then put it into our preview target. So this is the thing we're putting it into. And in this case, it already had an image attached. So we just want to show that image. And then if we end up changing it, we can update the preview with the new image uh, without doing anything on the back end. And then for this style, we're actually just going to change this to a class and we're going to make this the image class that we created earlier. So that takes care of that. Now we have to handle the else block. In the case of the else block, we're gonna have another image tag with nothing inside of it. The data will just be the previews underscore target, and we'll add the class at the end here as well, just to clean this up a little bit. For uh, making sure, well, I guess we can just run this. Uh, we'll come over to our, our JavaScript real quick. We'll set this up, uh, and then we'll talk about what I wanted to talk about. So the first thing we have to do is we have to grab the input, which we're just going to get from this dot input target. We can then grab the preview, which is going to be from this dot preview target, which needs to correlate to our static targets up here. Just, just so we're clear uh, for the file, we're going to say, grab the input dot files and grab the zeroth element from there. Of course you can expand this. If you have multiple set to true, uh, you just need to add some additional logic to make sure you're adding all of the previews as necessary. We then need to create a file reader. And then what we can do is we can say reader uh, dot on load end equals function. So after we finish loading the image, we want to set the preview dot source equal to the reader dot results. So that'll set the SRC on this image tag, which by default will be empty. Uh, and then if you already have an image attached, it'll be that active storage image URL. And we can come right here and we can say if the file reader dot read as data URL for the file, uh, else set the preview dot source to be uh, nil. So we can go ahead and save this. Now, if we come over here and we refresh, I'm gonna go ahead and full screen this. We refresh, you'll see nothing changes. If we do a test in a case right here, and I'll zoom in a bit so you can read this. If we choose a file, we'll choose the first one in my downloads. You can see this appears right here and we can now uh, create post. 
we come in here and we edit this post because we're grabbing the previous file if it was already attached uh, in our uh, image preview. If it was already attached, we're grabbing the post.image. It's already showing up here. Now, if you want to clean this up a little bit and you know make it look a little bit better, what you can do when you come in to create a new post right now, you'll see that there is no gap here. And then when you choose a file, the gap sort of gets created and the whole file jumps around. If you want to prevent that, what you can actually do is uh, in your uh, form right here, what you can do is grab a thing below the, uh, the label, I think, is where I had it. Uh, or no, it was below the file field is where we had it. You can come below the file field and in here you can do a div with a, oops, a div with a class equal to, I think we called this the image dash container. We'll go ahead and we'll put this in here and then we can come down here and we can do a div to close this. You can come over here and now if we refresh, you'll see you already have this gap baked into your, your form. Now, if you choose an image in here, we'll grab, I don't know, this one, you can see this appears just like you would expect it to. Uh, without the entire form changing. Now, of course, you can accomplish this by sending like min widths and stuff like that. Uh, it's really depends on how you want to do it. But in this case, you now have image previews working. And of course, you can come in here, edit one of these. So we'll choose this post, click edit, we'll choose a new file. Uh, we'll grab the uh, one from the other day. And you can see that changes without the form changing or anything else. Uh, and it's not hitting the back end when you do it. So it's entirely front end driven. So now if we refresh, it'll go back to the phone picture. Yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Hopefully this was interesting and helpful, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.